There's a huge monolith on the Mars moon Phobos. It's tall, uniform, triangular shaped. Is it extraterrestrial construction? Just look at it. In the middle of nowhere. This is these are this is the moon Phobos, one of Mars' two moons. And the monolith is a picture taken by NASA. This is not a conspiracy theory. These are actually Mars, Phobos, Moons images. It's a mysterious object. It was spotted several years ago by a NASA probe. And up to now, nobody is sure what it is, who put it there, how it got there. And if you look at it, it's in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by what looks to be a few impact craters. And it seems to be a uniform type of a column, a three-sided column, and it gives a very uniform shadow. Uh, this is uh, by Colin Barris on BBC, but of course it's information given by NASA. Now people want to find out how it got there and who put it there, obviously. Now these are the words of Buzz Aldrin. He was the second man to walk on the moon and this is what he said in 2009. He was talking about a peculiar large solitary monolith rock and it sits on the surface of the Martian moon Phobos. All right, said many people are vexed by the Phobos monolith. And of course, he's right. Uh, this only uh, brings up questions, and we don't have any answers to these questions. It's still a mystery. It's inspired all manner of alien based conspiracy theories, and uh, it gave it, it its name to the album released by. Les Claypool and Sean Lennon Ono. So what is it? The monolith, as we can see, appears to be not, not a boulder, but it's like a column, I would say. And uh, it's described as a building-sized 90 meter tall. Meters, 90 times 3 is 290, 270 feet tall. About 300 feet tall like a 10-story building. Uh, no, uh, 3 hit times 2, it's a 30-story uh, building. It stands in a desolate area of Phobos, as we can see, surrounded by a couple of craters, and uh, it seems to be uh, totally out of place there. And it makes the monolith seem even more impressive. That the scientific community does not see these types of monoliths as evidence of advanced alien civilizations. This Martian monolith is uh, certainly no more than a straight-edged chunk of rock and they say it could have tumbled down from a nearby cliff. Well, we don't seem to see any cliffs nearby, but anyway, uh, perfectly natural erosional forces can also explain how it got there. And uh, but it also explains why Mars seems to be home uh, to a levitating spoon and an Egyptian-style pyramid. Other features that we found are, of course, the face on Mars. And uh, we've also found pyramids. We've also found tunnels. A lot of mysterious things that we found. There are people who keep on looking at the NASA Mars images and find all types of Things that look like uh, anywhere from utensils to shoes to all types of animals and even to humanoid figures. Now Phobos monolith, this is the moon of Mars, this Phobos monolith uh, has not received much scientific attention, unfortunately. Now it's, um, it could be a shard formed during an impact event. That seems uh, quite far-fetched, but anyway, uh, it's certainly evidence that Phobos suffered 
occasional asteroids impacts, as we saw in the previous video to this one. They even claimed that a huge asteroid impact of an asteroid of at least two, uh, 724 miles across could have given rise to Mars two moons, Phobos and Deimos. And this is the Phobos uh, moon that we're talking about now with this monolith. They claim that such debris might actually have been flung from Mars, flung at Phobos from the surface of Mars when it was hit by asteroids from time to time. And, uh, and we know that Phobos is about the most mysterious body known in the solar system. As we said, it orbits about 3,700 uh, 3, miles from the Martian surface, closer to its primary body, Mars, than any other known planetary moon. It is so close that it orbits Mars much faster than Mars rotates and completes an orbit in just about 7 hours and 39 minutes. As a result, from the surface of Mars, it appears to rise in the west, moving across the sky in 4 hours, 15 minutes or less, and set in the east twice each Martian day. It's one of the least reflective bodies in the solar system, Phobos that is, and surface temperatures on Phobos range from about 25 degrees Fahrenheit on the sunlit side to minus 170 Fahrenheit on the shadowed side. Now, as we saw uh, in the previous video, this is uh, what Wikipedia states, the defining surface feature is the large impact crater on Phobos called Stickney, S-T-I-C-K-N-E-Y, and it takes up the substantial portion of the moon's surface. In November 2018, astronomers concluded that the many grooves on Phobos were caused by boulders ejected from the asteroid impact that created Stickney, a crater that rolled around on the surface of the moon, they say that Phobos may be a rubble pile held together by a thin crust and that it's being torn apart by tidal interactions. The thing is this, though. When you look at Phobos and you see the impact crater, uh, it does not seem to be a rubble held together by a thin crust. If it was hit by an asteroid, that would be a huge impact. And the rubble held by a thin crust would have probably, I, in my opinion, could have just bust apart and uh, blasted into pieces. Now, this Phobos impact seems to be as if it, it looks like uh, something that uh, perhaps crashed into, into a car, uh, and the car had an indentation, and the metal parts uh, were still there, intact around it. That's what Phobos looks like to me. It looks to be made of a huge chunk of metal, that was uh, impacted didn't do it was a huge impact but it didn't do a huge amount of damage and they state that the grooves on top of the surface were from that impact well if it had a uh, thin crust as the uh, scientists claim it would have cracked it would have probably ripped itself apart now these are just my comments because of what i'm looking at i mean if you look at this thing here the strictly crater. It doesn't seem to be a rubble held together by a thin crust. It seems to be a very intense metallic type of a structure that is very strong, very strong, and can uh, can live through a huge asteroid impact like this. And uh, it doesn't seem to have that much of a disaster, a catastrophe on the uh, on the surface of it. Because they only have some grooves, but the grooves themselves are very strange because they're just perpendicular to each other. Now, this this monolith, I don't understand why they don't examine this. Because, obviously, they're claiming that they want to go to Phobos before they land on Mars. Uh, maybe they're keeping it a secret. I don't know. Maybe they, they already know what, what this is and how it got there. But they don't want to disclose things to everybody in the public. I have no idea. But uh, it very it seems very strange to me that if they're going to land on Mars and Phobos, the moon of Mars, 
that they haven't told us what this is. And again, this to me does not seem like a rubble and a very thin crust. This to me is not a rubble. This to me is a huge, massive, metallic type of a thing. And uh, whatever hit it here didn't do much of a damage to the surface. Although to me, these grooves uh, and dots to me are quite geometric and probably very scientific looking. I don't know what to say. They um, don't seem to be uh, scrapes from an asteroid because they're all over the place. And they're very uh, parallel to each other. But anyway, let's get back to what we were talking about concerning the monolith. They said it was possibly a shard formed during an asteroid impact. Now, given that Phobos is so small, there's another potential source that impact debris from the surface uh, might be flung to Phobos from Mars. Now, some computations suggest about 250 parts per million or even more of unconsolidated rock debris on Phobos' surface has come from Mars. Well, looking at Phobos, it does not seem that there's any rock debris on the surface. To me, it looks like the surface is totally smooth and metallic. Can you see any rock debris? I don't see any. Now, unless they've, they've, they're talking about another moon, the, the images I have, we have here from Mars shows that it's totally smooth. Now, alternatively, Phobos monolith might not have formed during an impact. It could be a rare chunk of the moon's solid bedrock poking up through the surface that is otherwise mostly strewn with, with uh, loose debris. Again, I don't see any loose debris. Uh, the idea that was discussed years ago by planetary scientists exploring the possibility of a mission to Phobos, if this is true, it means that the monolith could hold clues about how Phobos was created. And that would make the monolith a surprisingly big deal. Phobos is just about the most mysterious body, as we said, known in the solar system. One of the two moons of Mars, the other being Deimos. It's not really clear how they got there. Both are small, irregular shapes, making them look like little asteroids that fell into Mars' gravitational clutches long ago. These moons orbit Mars in a way that's incompatible with this snatched asteroid idea. And... Uh, it could be that they formed from the same material that Mars did when the planet became coalesced billions of years ago. Now, precise astronomical measurements reveal that Phobos has a much lower density than typical Martian rock, geologically speaking. That leaves a third idea that Mars suffered a devastating impact with a large protoplanet long, long ago, which generated the two moons. And you'll see that in the previous video to this one. Now, a massive impact did apparently generate a large moon. It was the large moon that encouraged the formation of Phobos and Deimos and several other satellites left over from the, de the debris. Eventually, the large moon and all but two of the small moons orbited so closely to Mars that they disintegrated and returned to the Martian surface. Phobos and Deimos alone survived, but uh, not for long. From what the um, scientists say, Phobos will eventually plunge into Mars. Because it gets closer to Mars at about uh, two meters every hundred years. Two meters is about seven feet. And it's predicted that within 30 to 50 million years, it will either collide with Mars or break up into a planetary ring around Mars. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events. 
events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.